Welcome to another episode of Carved in Stone, an exploration of our community cemeteries to tell the story of the people that once called Norfolk County home. This series has been brought to you by the fine folks at Norfolk County Heritage and Culture. Thank you for joining us, for liking, and for sharing this fantastic social history. Memorial Church Cemetery in Port Ryerson. In the 1850s, Charles and Annie Brown made their home in the lakeside community of Port Ryerson. Charles was born into slavery in Virginia around 1821. Oral history tells us that in the 1840s, Charles was brought to Niagara-on-the-Lake with his enslaver. There, the enslaver tried to start an illicit fighting ring for individuals to box with Charles and for bystanders to gamble on the outcome. Edward Ryersey of Port Ryersey witnessed this and quickly told Charles, standing back from the crowd, that there were anti-slavery laws in Canada and that while he was there, he was considered a free man. Charles accompanied Edward to Port Ryersey. He settled in the lakeside community and he and his wife Annie raised their children, John Francis and Theodore. The Brown family were active community members. In addition to farming the land, Charles worked in the booming shipping industry. When it was time to construct a dedicated church in 1869, Charles contributed to the building fund. The Browns also joined with the neighbors to contribute to the annual salary for the minister. Charles and Annie's son, John Francis, worked on the lake but died young. Charles's youngest son, Theodore, married and had nine children with his wife, Theodora. He farmed the family homestead in Port Ryersey and occasionally worked for West and Peachy of Simcoe, the company which built the renowned alligator warping tugs. Theodore and Theodora's children were baptized in the memorial church and they all attended the local public school. Their eldest son, Albert, spent a great deal of time with the village blacksmith, Robert Stalker, and when he turned 15, he apprenticed with Stalker for seven years. He went on to work with various blacksmiths in southern Ontario. In December of 1923, Albert opened his own shop in Simcoe on the corner of Culver and Water Streets. In 1942, he moved his business a few doors down. Albert's business was successful, and he became the prime furrier for the racehorses competing at the Norfolk County Fair. Albert became a well-known community member in Simcoe, not only for his business, but also due to his many involvements. He volunteered with youth sports. After retiring from his business, Albert worked as a crossing guard at South Public School. He was a member of the Masonic Lodge from 1925 until his passing in 1972. Today, in the Port Ryersey Memorial Church Cemetery, stands a monument to the Brown family. Although Theodore and some of his family are buried here, and it is believed that Charles and Annie are at rest with their children, there were no headstones or markers. In 2013, their descendants honored them by unveiling a monument to commemorate the family who helped shape the community. Mm -hmm. 